your home for postseason baseball. It's game six of the American League Championship Series between the Tampa Bay Rays and the Minnesota Twins. Hi again, everyone. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to our special postseason coverage of baseball on the show. With me is Mark DeRosa and Dan Plesak. And, Dan, obviously a lot of things still up in the air as we get ready for game six. Yeah, you see the results through the first five games. It's been everything we could have hoped for. And now at three games to two, you've got a team coming in here that needs to win the final two games on the road to take the series. Going to be a tall order to fill, but I think they're as capable as anyone to pulling it off. All right, the stage is set. The starters get their final tosses in out in the bullpen, and we've got a good one in store for you, folks. Play-by-play -play is coming up next. Kenta Maeda will do the pitching with a trip to the World Series on the table. Dan Plezak, what do you got? You know, Matt, he wasn't all that bad in his last one. In a day and age where we don't see a lot of complete games, six full innings in his last one. And if they can score him a few runs, he has a chance to win this one here today. And that will bring in Yandy Diaz. And we are set for baseball here this evening. A ball and two strikes now. A cool 47 degrees tonight at first pitch. Just off the outside that time, laid off for a ball. Here now the 2 2. He is swung on and missed. He got him. Boy, that's the best pitch in baseball right there with two strikes. That elevated fastball. Every hitter thinks that, hey, they can do something with that. But most of the time, you get the result that you saw right there. A big swing and a miss and another strikeout. To the plate now, Brandon Lau. And he fouls this one off. Maeda is what you may call a stingy starting pitcher. He rarely gets hit around, and on top of that, he usually excels at limiting free passes. A great combination to have. Matty V, I think one of the keys to being a good starting pitcher, one, limiting the number of pitches that you throw in a game, and two, getting out as quickly as you can. And there aren't too many guys that do it better than this guy. Not a lot of pitches. One of the things I like, he's in attack mode from the first pitch of every at-bat. And there is our officiating crew in this one, calling balls and strikes, Mr. Freddie Ferguson. You know, this is one of the guys behind the dish, Freddie Ferguson, Dan, that the rookies are going to have a tough time with. If you've played in the league for a little bit, you understand that he's got his own zone. I, you touched on it, d -Roy. I think he rewards the veteran players, not only pitchers, but position players. He makes the younger players, he makes them earn their keep. Hey, not an easy thing to do right there, Dero, with that stacked infield on the right side. To hit it through where the shift is, have to hit that in the right place at the right time. Yeah, he found a good result right there, Dan. Pitcher actually executed right there. Got him to hit it where he wanted to. Put good barrel, good contact on that ball and was able to find the hole. Big fastball, and he's well behind it with the swing. Can't come out of his game plan right here. He knows he's a known sinker baller. I know it was a four-seamer right there, but get back to that two-seam. It's what his M.O. is. The one-two. Out in front as this is pulled foul into the seats. Lau stands at first with one out. And he popped him up over toward the left side of the infield. Their 
for it is Donaldson, and there are two away now. That is four. The right fielder, Austin Meadows. Takes a pass and misses. That's strike two. The one two is swung on and missed. He got him. One left for Tampa. The Twins coming up. No score. Charlie Morton is charged with keeping their hopes alive on the mound here in the League Championship Series. What's your take on him, Dan? Boy, Charlie Morton has really made a name for himself. Big arm and a big fastball. Good sinking fastball, too. 95 to 98 miles an hour big overhand curveball he's very valuable too he's had a lot of success pitching out of the bullpen and also one of the top starting pitchers in the league right now the 1-1 one, one. Is a bunt attempt, but he missed it. The one two. Nope, at the ball. Two balls, two strikes. We got three balls and two strikes. You know, we'll see him work both sides of the plate with his curveball. Maybe not that far in, but he'll move that pitch around the zone to give it a different look. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Margo's under it. He's got it one away. Batting second, the third baseman. The next twin up, Josh Donaldson. Bases are empty, one man out. And there's ball two now. This one's outside quite a bit off the plate that time. This is where you cash your checks right here. Three one. You're one of the best hitters in the game. You live for situations like this. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. And he missed with that one. It's ball four. A one out walk here in the home first. Batting third. The designated hitter. Now it will be the Minnesota D.H. Nelson Cruz. First shot for him here with a runner at first now and one away. Runner at first here, one man out. And that misses two and one. Just off the inside part of the plate, it's three and one. He's having a really hard time finding his rhythm and finding the strike zone. It's going to allow this offense to keyhole him in big situations. He's got to figure it out pretty quick. The three one. Full count now.
3 2 pitch. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And it's a foul ball. The 3 2 one more time. It's a swing and a miss. That's strike three. And with two away, here's a look at our updated playoff brackets. And the question on everyone's mind is, will we be able to punch our first ticket to the World Series after tonight's ball game? One one. And this one's in the dirt. And he'll rein it in as the count moves to one and two. And it's fouled away. A runner on first with two away. This is on the ground over to first. Fielded cleanly. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. One left for Minnesota. We are still scoreless. So next to the plate for Tampa Bay, Yoshi Tsutsugo. He'll lead things off against Kenta Maeda. Get out of the way there, so the leadoff man will be aboard to open up the inning. And this guy loves to throw the slider, and it's a very effective pitch for him. But here's the flip side of that coin: he starts this one too far inside and plunks the hitter. one pitch waves and misses for strike number two hey you know in the back of your mind as a batter right here he's got that nasty sinker I know it's 0-2 but he might not be looking for the punch out you have to find a way as a batter to get that two seamer up in the zone or you're going to ground into a double play to two balls and two strikes now This is this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. This would be an absolute terrible start to the inning. After drilling the first guy, you can't allow the second guy to reach base via the wall. He's set. Here's the three and two. Hit in the air to straightaway center. Buxton will settle under it to make the play for the first out, as the runner will have to head back to first. Got it, got it. The center fielder, Kevin Kiermaier. So one got in the inning here with the runner at first. And that means Kevin Kiermaier will hit next. The 1-1 one, one home is taken for ball two. Hit hard on the ground to second. And that gets through for a one out base hit. A lot of traffic hitting a base pass first and second with one out. I know you're looking for a double play ball, Dan. No question about it. I think one of the things you like to do on a pitcher is try to jump on him early before he gets settled in. So far, so good. First and second. Looks like a big inning could be brewing. At the plate now, Manuel Margot fouled off. No score here as we play inning number two. Line drive to center field. And that's in there. Base hit. And a good throw is going to hold that runner at third. So they're loaded now with only one away. 
The nice piece of hitting right point. there. Looked like the guy on second mm -hmm. had to respect it and freeze a little bit. They had to freeze there for a second to make sure that line drive gets down, but eventually does get the third base. Working for the punch out and the offering. Bases are loaded with only one out. Grounder down the line at third. But this is going to be a foul ball as that keeps things at two and two. Pitch on its way now to Zunino. Hit high and deep to left field. Looking up is Rosario. Gone! It's a grand slam. So one swing, and he unloads the bases on that one. His second home run of the series as they move on top four to nothing. Grand Slam's got to fire you up right here. Not only just an unbelievable at bat, but four stakes to boot to give your team the lead. Couldn't be more fired up. So now to the plate, Yandy Diaz. Count remains two and two. Oh, that's frustrating right there. He was right on that fastball, took it deep, just couldn't keep it fair. How many times have you seen it? There's a good chance he's punching out right here. Now the three and two pitch. Now a ball lined to the left side. But foul. Payoff pitch one more time. Left field. Rosario is in his tracks now. And that's out number two. Now back. Number Up eight. next for the Rays, Brandon Lau. One for one after a single this first time up. Pitch on the way. Well hit. Deep down the right field line. And that's going to wind up hooking just a bit foul. So a missed opportunity there. And right into the shift. But this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. And the pitch. Down the left field line and deep. And no one can get there. It's a foul ball. The one two. After multiple pitches were fouled off, it gets a little disappointing as a pitcher. So you think, say, I'm going to throw one way off the plate and see if he'll chase it. Didn't happen. Four runs here in this half inning. And we'll see another pitch here as this ball's chopped foul at home plate. He's getting his money's worth up there now. It's full three and two. Hey, this guy's a hard guy to put away. He's fouling off some tough pitches. Two-two count. And he just seems to keep hanging right in there. Neither guy willing to give in, and the ad battle continue. Now the three and two pitch. Popped him up. Garver over to his right. And that ends the inning. But one more look here at the big blow for the Rays. A grand slam home run. We'll go to the bottom of the second. It's now 4-0 Tampa Bay. One one home. Here we go. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to one and two now. 
pitch on the way. Swing and a liner. A leaping try, but it's out of his reach and into the outfield. Hey, some guys can handle the postseason lights, and this is obviously one of them. Another base hit leading off for the boys. This guy's had a monster postseason so far. Here's Miguel Sano in prior outings against Charlie Morton. He's one for five. And this one's low here, so the count swells to three and one. No reason to sit on anything other than hard stuff in a location you like and drive it right now. The 3 1. On the ground to second base. This could be two. A bare hand for one. On to first to complete the double play. Really good pitch from the pitcher right there. Down in the zone. Hits on top of it. Induces the ground ball double play. Digging in, Byron Buxton will try to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. Bases are empty here with two men out. Fouled away. Lifted in the air toward the line in right. And foul. And it'll lay off the curveball that's in the dirt that time, and it's back to even now at two and two. Pretty good breaking ball to lay off of right there. If I'm pitching, I might think this guy might be sitting on something off speed. The two two. Gets him looking up around the letters. Nothing doing here for the twins. They trail here four to nothing. Welcome back to Target Field as we send it to Heidi Watney. Matt, race manager Kevin Cash talked to me in between innings about his lineup's offensive production. And overall, he's really happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've already put four runs on the board, and they've done so by running up their opponent's pitch count. So he said he thinks they're going to have a lot more opportunities to score because of that as the game goes on. All right, Heidi, thank you. New inning set to get underway, and digging in next will be Joey Wendell. The 1 1 home he is swung on and missed, and that's strike two. I think getting the leadoff man in every inning is important as a pitcher. When you're coming off an inning that you really labored through, it makes all the difference mentally. Ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swing and a liner. And it looks like he'll have extra bases here to begin the third. And he'll pull into second here with nobody out. Let's slow this one down and take another look. Great camera angle here. Looking straight down the left field line. You see him take that inside route to the ball. His hands stay back. And he goes oppo to find himself at second. At the plate, Austin Meadows hmm, got caught lunging there as this one's fouled away. I love the fact that the hitter was able to foul that pitch away. I always thought with two strikes, you give the pitcher that inside part of the plate and you do your best to cover away. The 2-2. Two -two. He's got that certainly timed up now. I'd be shocked if the pitcher goes to the well three times in a row with off speed. Another 2-2 offering. 
A swing and a drive to center field. That one's got a chance. Center fielder looking up. Still going back. Gone! Two run shot to straight away center. His first homer here in the series. As they pile on, it's now six to nothing. Well, in just a little more than two innings of work, he's given up two homers. Could be just one of those games for him. We'll see how much rope they give him. It's definitely getting shorter at the moment. Now here comes the Twins manager on his way to the mound. And a change is forthcoming as that's going to do it for his starter here this evening. So as he leaves, I would imagine these fans would not be much pleased with his performance here this evening as he certainly was not sharp. Fernando Romero is going to come on to pitch here, and in just the third inning, you have to think he'll be asked to eat some innings. Into the box, Yoshi Tsutsugo. This is hit high in the air out toward left center. Buxton is in retreat as he pulls it in for the first out. So the bases are empty with one man gone. And up next will be Willie Adamas. Still only one out in the inning. And now a slider in there for a called third strike. And there are two gone now. Riding in, Kevin Kiermeyer. He reached on a single in his first try. The 1 1 home. Misses for the second ball. And a 2 1 slider is looked at for a called strike two. Two out, nobody on. There's a swing and a high deep drive headed for the right field corner. And he just couldn't keep that ball fair as it winds up a long foul ball. Pitch is popped up. Sano is under it. And that's the third out. Rays get a couple as you take another look at the two run home run. We played two and a half. It's the Rays six and the Twins nothing. Bottom of the third now, and that'll bring up the outfielder, Max Kepler. Lots of baseball left in this one as we're still early on, but you don't want to fall too far behind. They're already down by a bundle, and one of the things you want your leadoff guy to get on and set the table for the big boys to start driving in some runs. Kiermaier has to roam straight back, but he has it for the first down. Now with the plate, Mitch Garver. He'll get to take his first cuts here. And they'll run this one in on him and he can't connect so he finds himself down one and two now well that's a jam shot right there that's as good as it gets in my opinion Woo! up and in swing and a miss at the curveball and there's your second out of the inning pretty textbook breaking ball for the punch out right there got it to bend a lot and by the time it got there it had fallen completely out of the zone not much you can do with that pitch In now, Jorge Polanco. Oh, he couldn't pull that one back as he clearly broke the plane to the plate, and that'll be ruled a strike. And he fouls this one off. And it's fouled away. Bases are empty here with two men out. Counts even two and two for Polanco. Man, this guy's a grinder. Fouls off good pitches, 
and doesn't seem to swing at the ones just off the corner. This guy's a pitcher's nightmare. And that's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. You can certainly tell at bats like this one, frustrate the heck out of a pitcher. But you got to find a way to stay composed and execute your plan. And this misses for ball four. The second walk he surrendered here in the first three innings. Now batting at third baseman. Josh Donaldson digging in now. Man at first after the two out walk. Two out with the man at first. Drilled on the ground is short. Adamas picks it up. Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as the side is retired. Twins wind up stranding one. They won't make a dent in a six to nothing deficit. set for the start of the fourth and that'll bring up the outfielder Manuel Margot even though they're up by a boatload early on in this one you can't get complacent and get lazy they got to keep the gas pedal down because this team that they're playing can strike and score a lot of runs too and he's going to get to second now with nobody out no doubt about it he How was about looking it? fastball all the way there and that's exactly what he got Got the barrel out front and just blasted it down the line for an extra base hit. Nobody out. Runner in scoring position. Great opportunity here. Standing in now, Mike Sonino. To two and two now. And hey, this guy's got an 89 mile an hour changeup. There was a time when 89 was a pretty good fastball. And he tries to get him to reach for it, but it stays outside. Three and two. Six runs, seven hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. Fouled off. Swing and a miss as he ran the fastball right by him for the first down. Talk about blowing it by a guy. Geez, I mean, that fastball was way behind him when the swing came through the zone. I have to think he was looking for something off speed, and he just couldn't pull the trigger on that fastball. At the plate now, Yandy Diaz. Pitch inside the throw, and he's safe. Slider can't find the zone here, and he's behind now three and one. Some movement now in the Minnesota bullpen as a right-hander's up and throwing. The three and one pitch. And solid contact there as this ball is belted high in the air out to left. Boy, and the shellacking continues as this is down for extra bases. Now that number eight. Into the box now, Brendan Lau. Got him looking with the fastball as that had some two-seam movement to it. Two gone. It's never a good look to strike out looking, but it's way now worse when you do it with a guy in scoring position. Those are the times you really want to see a guy battle and at least put the ball in play. To the plate now, Joey Wendell. A good action on the two-seamer there, and it's one and two. Seven runs, eight hits, and no errors for Tampa Bay so far. 
And that misses two and two. I like what he was trying to do there with the two seam fastball, but that's a tough pitch to come in. When you throw it glove side like that, it's really tough to get it to come back to the corner. Here now the 2-2 is looked at and the count moves full. For the guy in the mound, this is one of those innings where nothing comes easy. He's thrown a bunch of pitches, and this A.B. hasn't been any different. Definitely laboring at the moment. Two out here and a runner at second. Right side. He's got it. And he'll step on the bag himself, and the inning is over. A run for the Rays thanks to the RBI double. Bottom of the fourth coming up. It's the Rays seven and the Twins nothing. Ready to go in the bottom of the fourth. And standing in is the DH, Nelson Cruz. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. He's fallen behind now. Three and one. Team's been struggling on offense. Let your D work for you right here. Pound the zone. The three one. A swing and a miss and that'll fill the count at three and two. What I love right there is just the freedom in that hack. He ain't trying to do anything but hit the baseball as far as he can. And that misses for ball four. It's a leadoff walk that starts the bottom of the fourth. Well, the reason power hitters generally draw more walks than other guys is exactly what we saw right there. Pitchers work around them and nibble the corners a lot more so they don't get burned. He made some good pitches, but he just couldn't get him to chase enough out of the zone. Coming to the plate now, Eddie Rosario. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result. That's his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll too. Boy, not exactly what you'd like as a pitcher. One of the keys is to minimize your pitches, attack the strike zone early, a lot of deep counts, and working himself into a lot of trouble. Fouled away. The 2-2. Two -two. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to go a little bit further outside the zone. Three foul balls in a row. He wants to get a swing and a miss on this next pitch. And he fouls this one off. He's set. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. He's definitely going to want to get greedy in his own, and he's obviously seeing the ball well, or he would have swung at that pitch. Sometimes in these long, epic at-bats, you start to get into swing mode. He finally wears him down here as he strikes him out after a nine pitch at bat. That was some nice execution on that pitch. Spotted it nicely down around the bottom of the zone. And when you do that, especially with two strikes, not a lot of guys are going to hurt you. You're going to get a lot of ground balls and swings and misses down there. At the plate, Luis Arias in the air down the line in left. And that will end up a foul ball. You're lucky if you get one pitch a night right down the middle. Cannot be late on that fastball. This one's outside. Quite a bit off the plate that time. We could see the runner in motion here on a 3-2 count with one out. There's a pretty good chance he's going to get a pitch to swing at. And if not, it's ball four anyways. And a fastball swung on and missed as he just reared back there. Two away. 
in a double play situation, you kind of expect most pitches to be down in the zone, hoping for a ground ball. So that was an interesting pitch selection to go up in the zone. I think he caught him off guard a little bit. So now to the plate, Miguel Sano. And he wouldn't have made contact with that one with an oar. It's two and two. This one misses, and that'll fill the count here. Three and two with two away. Three, two, two out, runner on first. Lots of possible outcomes on this pitch. Too close for comfort, and he did a good job just to make contact. A runner on first with two away. It's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. And that nearly would have gotten him on the board. Instead, it's a long foul ball. Oh, this ball is hammered out to deep center field. Gone all the way into the upper deck. Two runs on the board after that home run by Miguel Sano. His first homer so far in the series, and it's a 7-2 game now. seats in now Byron Buxton ball. one one pitch is a curveball that misses yeah, ball one, two yeah. and it's fouled away here now the two two Locks him up for strike three. I have to imagine there's a full moon tonight, judging by this bunch. We've got more. It's game six, and we're back after this. All ready to go in the top of the fifth. And next, it'll be the outfielder, Austin Meadows. Yeah, Matt, and going back to that last A-B, that was a pretty good fastball down in the zone, so that tells me this guy likes to get that bad head down, and he covers that low pitch quite well. It's difficult at times, though, because as a pitcher, you're taught to stay down in the zone. If you do that, you're throwing it right into this guy's wheelhouse. Now the 2-1 pitch. Swing and a liner. That gets down, and he's got himself a base hit. Now batter, the designated hitter, Yoki Kikuzo. Standing in now, Yoshi Tsutsugo. 2 1 pitch is a fastball swung on and missed 2 and 2. Pulled softly out toward right. In there, a base hit. And now they'll have runners at the corners to start off the inning. Danny, how frustrating is this right here? First and third, you got problems all over the place. You come right out of the dugout, right? You're starting an inning fresh. You're expecting to have a one, two, three inning. You look up, and all of a sudden, first and third, nobody out. It's time to make some good pitches. Ready for another chance. Willie Adamas and their runners at the corners now. The 1-1. One, one. High fly ball out to straightaway center. 
Catch will be made here. Tagging is the runner from third. And the run is in to score from third. Standing in, Kevin Kiermeyer. One in, one out, and one on here in the inning. Set. Here comes the 1 1. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to 1 and 2 now. Hit back up the middle, and that'll get by into center field for a base hit. You don't see that too much in today's game. Most guys, it doesn't matter what the now count that, is, they're looking to the line them drive the ball out of the ballpark. Not the case here. Good two-strike adjustment and able to punch a ground ball through a hole for a single. At the plate now, Manuel Margot swung on and lifted in the air to left center. Rosario will range to his left as he tracks this one down in left center for the second out of the inning. Now to the plate, Mike Zanino. He's one for two in this one. Two down, runners at first and second. Ball three. Two on, two out with a base open here as a pitcher. You have to be awful careful. You just don't want to groove something here and give this guy a pitch that he can hit one out of the park on. And he takes right. ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole in getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. Wow. All I know is these guys don't need any more help to get on base. Believe it or not, that's the first walk they've gotten. They've done all their damage the hard way. See if they can add to it here. Digging in to try it again. Yandy Diaz. He'll try to follow up the double in his last at bat with another big hit right here. Yeah, it's been an offensive explosion for him today. There's a fight at the bat rack. Everyone seems to be putting barrel on baseball in this lineup. Two and one to the Rays' leadoff batter. It often becomes harder to hit the zone when the pressure starts to heat up. him up drifting toward the left side of the infield Polanco is there to make the catch and they'll escape the bases loaded jam by giving up just one run so one run here on three hits no errors and three men left on base last half of the fifth coming up it's the Rays eight and the twins two. welcome back for the bottom of the fifth here's Heidi Watney Thanks, Matt. In between innings, I was able to catch up with the manager of the Twins to discuss his thoughts on Minnesota's lineup so far. And he told me he's pretty unhappy with their discipline at the plate in this one. He said their pitch selection has been the main reason for their struggles today, as far too often they've been swinging at pitches outside the strike zone. That's leading to a lot of soft contact and easy outs. So the focus going forward is on shrinking the zone and forcing the opposing pitching to throw more strikes. All right. Thanks, Heidi. Into the windup, here's the two and one pitch. Curveball fooled him there as he's way out in front. Got him to chase after the curveball below the zone there. That was a really nice pitch, and it can be a really tough one to lay off of as a hitter. Here now the two two. Is looked at for ball three. You do not want to walk the eight hole hitter. It just opens up so many options. Do we bunt them over to second with the nine hole hitter? Do we try and play for that big rally with the top of the order coming up? This is a huge pitch. You can't allow this guy to walk. And now Kepler belts one, carrying well out to right field. And gone. An absolute bomb. shot here to straight away right field his third home run of this series as they cut the gap a bit it's now an 8-3 ball game well if you're going to give up a tower 
Powering blast to one of the best players in their lineup. It's better to do it with no one on base. It stings, sure, but a solo shot isn't going to be the deciding factor in a game. Stepping in now, Mitch Garver. And the count will be full. Something has to give. Here's the payoff pitch. And right into the shift. Reined in. On the first, so a good bounce back pitch there as he gets the ground ball for the first out. So the batting order turns over now and set to go for Hippolanco. One run in and one gone so far this inning. Runs up and gets this one down. But a foul ball, one and two now. Here's the pitch. A bouncer to the left side. He's right there. Throw on the first will get him. Score at 5 3 on the put out, though it looked more like a 6 to 3 ground ball. Nevertheless, there are two away now. So two are gone in the Twins' half of the fifth. And here's Donaldson. Soft liner to the left side. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. But not before the Twins get one, and it comes on this solo home run. We're through five innings here tonight. It's now eight to three. Matt Whistler takes over to start the sixth inning on the mound. Now pitching for the Twins, number 37, Matt Whistler. Top half of the sixth about to get started and set to go is the second baseman, Brandon Lau. The 3 2 pitch. Hit hard. But this is a foul ball. Once again, a 3 2. And another foul ball. Swing and a shot hit down the corner. But this one will bend foul. Had plenty of distance though as it landed in the upper deck. Fouled off. A payoff pitch one more time. Is swung on and missed. He got him. That strikeout was a real good example of a pitcher continuing to make a guy chase out of the zone. When you recognize a hitter is in protect mode, you don't have to come inside the strike zone. You can just expand further and further until he literally can't touch it. Into the box now, Joey Wendell. Sent on the ground out to second. And that's the second out. Now that. So here's the cleanup hitter, Austin Meadows. He homered back in the third inning in this one. Two out, nobody on. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. Fouled away. Two two he is swung on and missed. He got him. Down in order go the Rays, but they lead it by a count of eight to three. Josh Fleming enters to do the pitching in the bottom of the sixth. Number sixty-four, Josh Fleming. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and digging in is the veteran D.H., Nelson Cruz. This one doesn't look good so far. Down by a boatload as we enter the middle innings. It's about time they get something going, and the last thing you want to do is fall behind where you have to score a bunch in the eighth and ninth inning. 
And a fastball swung on and missed as they set him down for the second time here tonight. Anytime a pitcher locates a fastball on the inside okay. corner, okay. it's going to be a tough pitch to no hit. That one was spot on, Eddie. and he had no answer for it. Rosario. To the plate now, Eddie Rosario. Now a curveball stays inside. Two balls and two strikes. Action in the Rays' pen now as they've got a lefty and a right-hander up and throwing. And he strikes him out as well. So make it back-to-back -back punch outs here to the first two men he faces out of the bullpen. No problems for him on the mound since he's come out of the pen to start this inning. That's back-to-back -back K's, and he's making it look pretty easy. This has the makings of a good outing so far. Into the box, Luis Arias. And he misses 2-1. and one. And that's upstairs running the count to 3-1. and one. Miguel Sano would be next if they can keep this inning alive. The 3 1. He pulls this one into right, and Meadows makes the catch for route number three. Twins are set down 1 2 3. Can't make any headway into an 8 3 deficit. Number 72 gets the call now from the bullpen to pitch in relief. Number 72. To the plate now is the designated hitter, Yoshi Tsutsugo. He singled his last time up. The 1-1 one, one is looked at for ball number two. Hasn't seen a heater yet in this at-bat. One might be coming right here. Ready with two balls and a strike. On a good pitch there. Had him stretching to get out there. And it's two and two now. Hey, I can't have one of my best left-handed power bats fishing for balls off the plate. Swing and a miss as he couldn't connect on the two-seamer, and that's out number one. Yeah, as they say, there's a hole in his swing in that location, so a good job there of exploiting that. That can be real hard for some guys to overcome when teams start figuring out what locations you just can't handle. So now to the plate, Willie Adamas. Too high that time, and it's three and one. One out, nobody on. Down the left field line and deep, and this is going to get down. It's a foul ball. Now the three and two pitch. Snatched out of midair at first base for route number two. Now batter, the center fielder, Kevin Kiermaier. Standing in, Kevin Kiermaier is looking for hit number three here in this at bat. Ready with the one and one. Well outside with the curveball for a ball. Bounced softly in front of the plate. Oh, and no time to get him at first. Not with his speed, and that'll go down as an infield single. Boy, when things are good, things are going really good. How about a swinging bunt infield single right there for his third knock of the game, d -Row. Yeah, he has to be feeling frisky right now. He's had two great at-bats, and then this one, he's 100% on fire. Getting an infield single for his third knock of the game, that's awesome. In now, Manuel Margo. Right side, but it's going to be a foul ball. Good plate discipline to lay off the slider that time, and he draws even a two and two. The classic back foot slider right there with two strikes. Usually gets a ton of swing and misses. 
Nice layoff right there. Fight for another pitch. Ready on two balls and two strikes. Here it comes. And he comes back with one down and in for ball three. Lifted in the air toward the line and right. But this will wind up being a foul ball. Pulled high in the air out to left field. On the move is Rosario. He's there to make the play, and that'll retire the side. Ray's strand just the one. But they lead it by a count of eight to three. Last half of the seventh here, and next to bat will be the first baseman, Miguel Sano. It doesn't look very promising so far in this one as we move into the later innings. Down by a bundle, it's time to get some base runners and hopefully a long ball to get them back into this one. Grounder hit hard down the first baseline, but that finds its way through for a base hit. And now it'll kick around in the corner. And he will pull into second with a leadoff double. Now at the plate now Byron Buxton looked like he was on that one but it's one and two hops this one up and no one can get there as it falls and they'll get it in quickly it's first and third now with nobody out I mean, you want to talk about doing your job and getting paid for it. There it is right there. Unselfish A.B. trying to work his guy from second to third. And um, what do you know? Not for yourself. Stepping in now, Max Kepler. And he fouls this one off. Had to sit back on the changeup, and he did a good job to get the bat on that one. Now another one-two. Hit softly on the ground to first. Fielded cleanly. One there, and he's in there safely. As a run will score on the play as well. On to first, but not in time. It's a fielder's choice and an RBI. Up next for Minnesota, Mitch Garver. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. Tough one to call there, but it's ruled just above the zone. And it's three and two now to the number nine hitter. Jorge Polanco is on deck. The 3-2 pitch. High in the air and deep to left center field. Back goes Kiermaier to the track. On the warning track, he makes the catch. Now in the box, Jorge Polanco. He was a ground out victim last time up. And he lost him here on 3-2 as that pitch misses. It's ball four. He did not want to let the hitter off the hook with two outs, and now he's got a runner in scoring position to deal with. Here's the third baseman, Josh Donaldson. No hits to this point. And it's fouled away. Two men are on with two men out. Now here's one hit in the air to the right side. And this is going to dunk in out there. A base hit. And a good throw will wind up holding that runner at third. So the bases become loaded now with two gone. Well, that's what's so disappointing as a pitcher. You make a really good pitch, and yet 
This guy's so big and so strong, he's able to muscle it into right field for a base hit. Yeah, you hand your batting gloves to the first base coach right there, and you thank your lucky stars. That's a nice A.B. Colin Poche answers the call to pitch here in a big spot. He inherits a bases loaded jam, but needs just one out to get out of it. Nelson Cruz will be the first one to greet him, and he'll bat in a big spot here. Bases loaded and two out in the inning. one home turned on but that's ripped foul down the third baseline Poche six foot three inch left hander he was taken in the 14th round back in the 2016 first year player draft hey this guy's got a chance to be an absolute steal being drafted where he was there are definite signs that he has a chance to make an impact at the big league level shot on the ground is short. Adamas brings it in. On to second for the force out and the side is retired. Twins forced to settle for one. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. Tampa Bay leads this one eight to four. Tyler Clippard has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. So here's Mike Zanino. It was a walk in his last trip. Here it comes on one and one. Struck him out. Second time tonight now that he's been set down on strikes. The first paper, number two. So Tampa's batting Yandy. order turns over and set to go. Yandy Diaz. Bases are empty. One man out. All even now. Two and two. off here's another 2 2 this is on the ground over to first and he'll step on first himself for the out into the box now Brandon Lau who comes into this appearance in the midst of a one for four day bases are empty here with two men out One and two is the changeup had him out in front there. Popped him up. Polanco is right there as he tucks this one away to retire the side. Rays go in order. One, two, three. They still lead it by a count of eight to four. It's on to pitch out of the bullpen in the bottom half of the eighth. Number 52, Chaz Rowe. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. And next to bat will be the outfielder, Eddie Rosario. run this one in on him and he can't connect so he finds himself down one and two now I'll tell you he just doesn't look comfortable in a box to me tonight he's been off balance with his swings and that one completely tied him up now a fastball but that's easy to lay off and it's back to even at two and two that's a good take on a fastball out of the zone hey I get it he's looking for a ball to drive but that ball was a little bit too far up in the zone that's one you normally pop right up 
Count full, three balls and two strikes. And this is taken here for ball four. So the leadoff man's on base to kick off the home eighth. Well, that was a slider in a 3-2 count. And it just didn't tempt him enough to get a good swing. A good job of pitch recognition and knowing the strike zone to draw the free pass there. Settling in now, Luis Arias. He lined out in his last trip, so looking for better fortunes here. Yeah, Matty, but as he walks to the plate right here, he feels good building off that last A-B. He hit that ball on the screws. Line toward the alley in left center. And that's in for his second hit of the afternoon. Well, that's something you see often in batting practice. Guys using the Number whole field three. there, D-Row. I like to see that a lefty that's just not always pull happy. 100%, Dan. That pitchers have gotten so much nastier in today's game that if you're not willing to play with the entire field, you're going to struggle. So the big bat of Miguel Sano digs in next. He's two for three with a home run and a double. None out, runners at first and second. And that's low, so a good eye there as he works the count back full. Byron Buxton, who represents the potential tying run here, waits on deck. set here's the three and two count remains full he'll try it again three and two and a half swing that time but it's a full swing in the eyes of the umpire and that'll be the first out of the inning a lot of indecision there on that check swing and that's something you see quite a lot on three and two when the difference between striking out and drawing a walk in can be an inch or two, it's pretty understandable why guys aren't always aggressive with their swings. Struck him out. Struck him out again, I should say. His third punch out of the game. Now batting, right fielder. So they'll go to the bullpen now, and it'll be the left-hander here to face the upcoming left-handed batter. Now picking for Tampa Bay, number 49, Brendan McKay. Max Kepler the next to grab a bat. And with men on base and two away, it feels like this at bat could go a long way toward deciding this thing. No doubt, Matt. A base hit here changes this game quite a bit. But if they can't score here, it looks pretty bleak for them heading into the last couple of innings. Two and one. Has to be a challenge pitch coming up here. He probably doesn't want to flirt with loading the bases. Two down, runners at first and second. And eight innings have come and gone now as the inning is over. Twin strand a pair. They're unable to make a dent in an 8-4 deficit. Duffy enters from the pen to start the ninth inning as he'll try to keep the score right where it is heading to the bottom of the ninth. Joey Wendell digs in now. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Now the one and one pitch. Heading out towards shallow right. Kepler's on the move. He can't get to it. This one's down. At the plate, Austin Meadows. 1-1 one, one pitch is a knuckle curve. He's in the hole now, 1-2. and two. Action in the bullpen now as a right-hander begins to throw out there. In the dirt here, but it won't skip away far enough for the runner to advance. 
Nobody out, runner on first. And he struck out again. That's the third time he's gone down on strikes in this one. Got him with a good high fastball there. Danny, we see a lot of that pitch in strikeout situations these days. What makes it so effective? I think, Matt, what makes it such a tough pitch is you're changing eye levels. That fastball up looks so enticing to hit that you think you see that ball as a hitter. Do you think you can drive it? But it's really hard to get on top of that good high hard fastball. Standing in now, Yoshi Tsutsugo. Got him. So he's down on strikes for the second time here tonight. That's back-to-back -back strikeouts now as they've been unable to advance that leadoff single into scoring position. Yeah, clearly no problems working out of the stretch right now, Matt. He's taking control of this inning after giving up that hit. Now we'll see if he can finish it off strong as well. Into the box now, Willie Adamas. Two and two now. Two out with the man at first. And he struck him out. So a good pitch there. And now they're going to need to string some hits together in this last at bat if they want to get back in this thing. So no runs here on a base hit. No errors. And one man left aboard. Nine, one, and two scheduled to lead off the bottom of the ninth. It's the Rays eight and the Twins four. Stepping in, Mitch Garver. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Now a ball swung on and heading for the stands in right, and that'll move the count to one and two now. Here's the pitch. Hit in the air toward the gap in right center. Meadows is there, one away. So stepping in, Jorge Polanco. He's hitless in his two at-bats so far. One out, nobody on. It's a high fly ball headed for the left field corner. If it stays fair, it's gone. And foul, though it had the home run distance. And he takes ball four again. And they clearly just don't want any part of him in this one. The third baseman, number 24. Riding in once again, Josh Donaldson. The 1 1 home. Now, this one's hit hard to left field by Donaldson and deep. And that ball will stay fair, and it's gone. A home run. two-run homer down the line in left his third home run of this series as they cut it to an 8-6 ball game One of the narratives of today's game has been driven by the long ball. We've seen these squads go deep a combined five times in this one. Yeah, Matty, you don't see this very often, d -Row, when it's cold and chilly like this. Wind blowing in a little bit. We're still seeing a lot of home runs. Yeah, Dan, I can't explain it. Let's just tip our hats to both offenses right now because they came to play. Moving traffic against this cold weather, not easy to do. Nick Anderson comes on here looking to get the final two outs and earn the save. So now to the plate, Nelson Cruz laid off, but a cold strike as that caught the outside. That's the exact spot to lean on as a reliever. As a hitter, you just have to tip your cap and look for the next one. Here now the 2-2. 
when you're playing close games like this, base runners mean everything, so he can ill afford to start giving away free passes. The 3 2 pitch. Fouled away. Another full count pitch home. Now this one is blasted to left field and there's no doubt about it. Back to back Jacks. A solo shot here to left and it's now an 8-7 ball game. Dinger number six on the day between these two lineups. I feel like I'm watching home run derby here, guys. Yeah, Dan, this doesn't make sense. It's absolutely freezing outside. The last place you want to be is in a batter's box, and this offensive team is driving balls out of the yard. This is what's crazy about the game of baseball, d -Row. You would think under these conditions it would be all in favor of the pitchers. That has been anything but the case so far in this one. Two balls and a strike now. One pitch. His fastball taken high for a ball. Three runs already home here. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential time run here is aboard late in the game. Well, he walked them on five pitches, but that last pitch was really good. He missed down, but only by a hair. When a hitter has a 3-1 count, he can wait until he gets a pitch he loves. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Luis Arias. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. He's set. Here comes the 1-1. Now a flare out to left center. In comes Margo. But he can't make the play as it finds the outfield grass. Well, it's so frustrating as a pitcher. You make a quality pitch on the inside half of the plate right there. You try to bust him in, d and he fights it off the other way. Yeah, you took your hat to the pitcher right there. He executed his pitch. But nice job by the offensive player. Fighting. It doesn't matter what it looks like. A knock's a knock. Diego Castillo takes the mound to try to get out of this mess. There are two on with only one away. Miguel Sano will be his first assignment here as he'll face him with runners at first and second and one gone. Tying and winning runs on base here with one big out. Two ball, one strike count to the Twins' first baseman. He's set, and the 2 1 pitch, and he fouls this one off. He's able to ride this one high and deep toward right center. Back goes Kiermaier at the track, but he can't get it as it's off the wall. Full classic, here they come. They walk off to win the American League pennant. Well, congratulations to them as they're now the American League champs. They're going to celebrate tonight, and then they're going to have to refocus for a run at the ultimate prize, the World Series trophy. Can't wait.
So the lineup really helped carry them to victory here in this one. And this man was a big reason why. He's our tops player of the game. Yeah, he delivered when it mattered most with the walk-off base hit, so better get his recognition. I just hope his guys didn't pummel him too hard when they went out there celebrating on the field. Partners Dan Plezak, Mark DeRosa, and our entire crew on that Vaskersian. This has been the American League Championship Series. The final line score for our ball game tonight for the victorious win, nine runs. So